in physics, there's a sense once you get to the theory of everything, you've understood everything. But there's a very deep sense in which you've actually understood not very much at all. You've understood at that particular level how things work, but you don't understand how the abstractions on top of abstractions form, all the way to the chemistry, to the human mind, and the human societies, and all those kinds of things. So uh, may maybe you can speak to the theory of everything and its history, and, and comment on what the heck does that even mean, the theory <laughs> of everything. Well, I don't think you can go back that far with something like that, maybe to the at best to the 17th century. If you go back all the way in antiquity, there are, of course, discussions about <laughs> the nature of the world. Right. But first of all, you have to uh, you have to recognize that the manipulative character of physics and chemistry, the probing of uh, let me put it this way. We assume and have assumed for a long time, I'll come back to when in a moment, that if I take a little device, which is really complicatedly made out of all kinds of things, and I put a piece of some material in it, and I monkey around with it and do all kinds of unnatural things to it, mm -hmm. things that wouldn't happen naturally, and I find out how it behaves and whatnot. And then I try and make an argument about how that really applies even in the natural world without any artificial structures and so on. That's not a belief that was widely held uh, by pretty much anyone until sometime maybe in the 1500s. And when it was first held, it was held by people we now call alchemists. So alchemy was the first, the early days of the theory of everything, of a dream of a theory of everything. I would put it a little differently. I think it's more along the way a dream that by probing nature in artificially constructed ways, we can find out what's going on deep down there. So that was that's distinct from science being an observing thing where you observe nature and you study nature. You're talking about probing, like messing with nature to understand it. Indeed I am, and but that of course is the very essence of experimental science. Yeah. Um, you have to um, you have to manipulate nature to find out things about it. And then you have to convince um, others that you haven't so manipulated it that what you've done is to produce what amounts to fake artifactual behavior that doesn't really hold purely naturally.